So let's give her a whirl, see what happens. Hey, this is Eric with Black Swan Odysseys and welcome back to the channel. I want to show you a nifty little thing I did with an air compressor uh, to save room for motorcycle travel. Now this isn't anything new. You'll find this all over the net where they take uh, portable air compressors and take them out of their case uh, just for that reason to make it more compact. And this was an experiment on my part so I wasn't sure how well I would like it. Um, so I spared no expense, went straight to Amazon and purchased my tire inflator for $18.99. This is an EP Auto and there's tons of these out there floating around, all of the basic thing. I just denuded it or took the case off of it. So here's your, the standard case. You can see here this is where the pressure gauge goes, high quality pressure gauge, only two pounds off, and then on off switch. This is what you end up with. You, these are the guts. This is what, everything that goes on here. And the only thing I really did for modifications, I reinforced the power cords by putting a, kind of changed the path of the soldering and added shrink tube wrap to it. So I did a, a, a small test to see how long it would take to fill up my tire. And I, for a comparison, I'm running a 170 by 18 rear tire. And from completely flat to 40 PSI, this little guy pumped it up in about three and a half minutes. So not too bad. So let's take a closer look exactly what I got and some of the steps I went through. Okay, like I said, here's the, the compressor I've purchased. If you look at it, uh, so the first thing you notice here is uh, this little stamp sticker, occasional use only. Huh. Well, that probably tells you right there that it's not going to be one that's going to be a long life compressor. But like I said, um, this was an experiment, so I didn't spend a lot of money on it. I wanted to play with it before I tore apart it. Here's the case again that held the compressor. Obviously, here's where the switch was. Uh, this held the uh, really cheap uh, pressure gauge. And it was really simple to, to uh, take apart. Uh, four screws. The fifth one was hidden behind this plastic cover. The reason why I purchased this particular model is on Amazon for the price point at the highest rating. You know, with Amazon and their and their rating system, you kind of take that with a grain of salt. This is basically how it would look, uh, minus the switch part out of here. And you can see that the cords come here and then it's got a little kind of a stuff pouch for the cords to go in. So if we open it up, this part would come out of here. And here we are. Here's the fan that we would remove. So here's the guts of the pump as it sets. Obviously the motor, uh, here's your compressor, your flywheel, uh, pressure gauge, and I think this is like a, some kind of a pressure relief system so it doesn't blow up on you. I kept the switch. I probably could have uh, pulled the switch out and wired, just wired it directly in here, uh, but I decided for this venture to try to do that. Here's the motor and the connections here, and you can see right here basically uh, it's sort of shrinked over so I can't show it to you, but these are just two long tabs that stick out about, oh, I think they're three quarters of an inch, or actually half inch out on each tab. <clears throat> and what they had done, there's a hole in, the, in each tab. They plugged the water through the hole and then soldered it. So you had a 90 degree bend in your wire, and so this would be a weak point in the wire and the wire was just flopping loose and so that that would eventually break with the system that they they had what I did is I just pulled the solder out cleaned up the wire so I had a, a half or like a, a three-eighths um, section of wire and soldered it flat here 
Uh, and what that did is that just kind of alleviated the stress and then I put shrink tube over the top of that. So if you're going to do a modification, that's something I would watch for there. That's a weak point coming out of the box. I really had to leave the air compressor um, valve gauge on there. Uh, and the reason why is the way this stays connected to the compressor is through the use of the, the case. So the gauge just fits right in there. And then this clamshell's on top of it and holds the pressure gauge into this base here. You can see a little bit of glue there. I just glued this to the, to the manifold. One of my experiments will be to pump it up um, that high and see if this gets you know blown off or not. <laughs> so the other piece of this is because now everything is exposed, you have these gears. And so this is laying flat on the table. And so you can imagine if this was in the dirt, uh, you're going to be getting all sorts of grime in there. Plus, this is sucking air right from the ground. They had this nice little hole here. So with that little hole, I just MacGyvered a little coat hanger wire and then you can hang that someplace off your bike in proximity of your filler tube connected. And so it does two things. One, it keeps it up in the air, makes it a little easier to read. And the other thing it does, um, keeps it away from the ground so it's not sucking up dirt dirt and dust. You can see on my pressure gauge that uh, we're just under about 38 psi according to that uh, fancy uh, gauge that came with this system. Like I said, I found it was at least two pounds off. So obviously I'm gonna pound, I'm gonna fill my t uh, air and my tire up to uh, 44 psi so I know I've got some buffer room. As a matter of fact, maybe even 45 psi. So let's give her a whirl, see what happens. Okay, there's 50 psi according to that gauge. So 47 psi. We'll let a little air up. And 42 right on the dot. So there we go. So after I've taken this off, and just within a few minutes, this is still warm, but uh, just barely warm to the touch. So that's not that big of a deal. Wherever you put it, you want to make sure you don't care about it vibrating on something. So this, I probably wouldn't go up that high. I'd probably want to go down to the next level. I don't know. Bend this someplace. And just so the pump motor is not rattling against anything, anything metallic that you don't want disturbed. First, let me talk about what my goals were for this. I was looking for the best tire inflation system out there for emergency or road repair. Something that was as compact as I possibly could get it, that was reliable and reusable. And I think I fit most of that bill with this. I learned some interesting things along the way as I was making this video. One of the first things I learned is there's an endless number of these tire pumps out there. Uh, and, and what I'm talking about is uh, these uh, tire inflation systems that are in small box the size of a small cigar box uh, that uh, market uh, that you can pump up, inflate uh, a standard car tire with it. Most of these little tire pumps I found were pretty cheaply made and pretty cheap in cost. Uh, like I said, the one that I made, I've used, uh, I purchased for $18. So something else I learned is price point didn't equate with the quality of components that you got. Uh, these, these the small little portable pumps uh, in, in a plastic case would go anywhere from uh, $12 all the way up to $100 anywhere in between. And in comparing you know, the different ones, they all looked about the same. And if you looked in comment sections, you'd find out that they would complain about some of these issues. For instance, uh, Slime makes one. Slime is a company that makes that liquid uh, for uh, flat repair. And they also sell a market and sell a tire pump 
their pump is suspiciously the same shape and style as the one I purchased for $18. Yet Slime sells theirs for $57. And looking at it, uh, the quality of the components are seem to be on par. I noticed like one thing that stands out is their tire nozzle is made out of plastic versus like the one I have that is brass. And uh, building what I did, I found that the case removal was very straightforward, simple. Four screws on the outside and one hidden screw underneath the plastic label. The pump does generate a lot of heat and that was one way to, to alleviate the heat by hanging it on something. Reliability, uh, remember that sticker on the box uh, for occasional use only? <laughs> so yeah, is it is it going to last a long time? Mm, no, and as I said before, I don't plan on using this a lot, but you do want it to work when you need it. And when is it likely to fail? Uh, when you got a flat tire and you're along the side of the road in the middle of nowhere. But for now, uh, that's going to be in my kit. So if you're not interested in uh, MacGyvering or Frankensteining a pump out of a case, I found three pumps that uh, I thought would uh, fit the bill. The first pump is called the Dynaplug. Tim at FTA Adventures did a review on the Dynaplug. I trust Tim, so his review, if he says it's good, I believe it. And don't take my word for it, go look at it, see what you think. The uh, second pump is one called the V1 Portable Mini Compressor. That uh, little mini pump is the same thing what I did. It basically, uh, all they do is they just put a shroud over the gear and the pump swing arm to kind of protect that. Other than that, it's the exact same thing what I had and it probably could be even be the exact compressor model because a lot of these are coming out of the same place in China where they're just building millions of these. The third option I think is the best one out there the pump itself, uh, the basic model, is $145, and depending on what options you get, it goes all the way to $195. And the pump, cycle pump, is made by a gentleman out of Seattle, Washington, and it looks like he's handcrafting these, putting them in uh, stout aluminum cases, and puts rubber bumpers on them to even protect that aluminum case. And that seems like a really good pump. Uh, I had a chance to view uh, inside one of them through um, a video and looking at the compressor pump that he uses comparing it to the one I have this that one looks to be a, a good quality uh, compressor pump with that in mind if I wasn't going to do what I did I'd probably purchase the cycle pump that would be the pump I would have purchased if I didn't do what I did so other viable options for tire emergency tire inflations I looked at two others other uh, systems out there one of them is the uh, battery powered cordless uh, uh, tire pump, but the reason why I discounted those as a viable option for emergency road use two reasons One is that having that big extra uh, bulky battery there added weight and bulk to your kit and The second option which is probably the most crucial part is you're having to constantly Monitor the level of that battery if that's not uh, if that battery doesn't have a full charge You're not going to pump your tire all the way up I thought to myself, why would I want to have an extra battery when I can plug into my battery on my bike and charge up that way? The second option, and that's the CO2 cartridges. It's been used in the bicycling community for, oh gosh, maybe even 20 years. And for bicycling, it's totally the way to go. Matter of fact, I have a set for that I use for bicycling and alongside the road uh, flat tire repair. But pumping up a bicycle tire versus pumping up a motorcycle tire are two separate things. The CO2 cartridge system was the first option I looked at as for an emergency tire repair system. But the problem I found uh, when I tested it, I asked myself how many of those small cartridges would it take to fill up my tire on my bike. So and at the time I had a Concourse 14 with a 190-17 tire and it took if I remember correctly, it took eight bottles to fill that tire up to 30 PSI. So that wasn't even to my running tire pressure. And that's one use. So if you have successive flots, you'd have to replace or you'd have to carry 18 bottles with you. So obviously all that bulk and weight uh, just wasn't an option. Please leave me a message in the comment section what you do for tire inflations. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give me a thumbs up. 
Thanks again, and we'll see you on the next ride.